It's spring term. The daffodils are bursting out of the ground. It's the Teacher Squad podcast, episode eight, with Heather Wright and Jane Considine. What have we got coming up this week, Jane? Well, I'm thinking about sticky back plastic, or is it tit tape? I don't know. Who knows? We'll have to wash it out. Uh, We're going to go to a happy place for teachers. There's going to be a bit of chaotic unboxing with our gorgeous guest, Rachel, from the Positive Teacher Company. Uh, Brilliant. And I'm going to lower the tone after all that happiness and talk about what sort of worrier are you? Are you a spiral, a panic, a brood? interesting and i'm gonna just rant on a little bit about making room for praise we can't get rid of the whoosh jane no please praise i want to be praised you want to be praised come on let's talk about it uh in a very nuanced way what right what is the right sort of praise that we should be giving kids and uh, does it make a difference yeah, yeah. good shout heather Let's do it. And for all our listeners, here's a whoosh. 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 Well, Heather, we've been wading through the emails, the reviews, the polls, what people want, what they don't want, what we're keeping. It's dead exciting, isn't it? We're like, we're going to morph, babe. We're morphing. I like that. (laughs) Did you just say that feedback from our scrutiny has been exciting (laughs) what a mindset shift yeah but it's been nice hasn't it thank you so much to those people who have taken the time because we we know how super busy you are you know we know that you're listening when you're ironing and when you're driving or you're loading the dishwasher but thanks so much for taking this and even more so for saying nice things yeah, do you know what? We even had, what about this, a five paragraph email laid out like super technical, like, babe, you know, I, I'm, are you okay, hun? You know, that was a long, <laughs> very thoughtful email. There's been some great stuff though, hasn't there, Heather? And lots of, uh, you know, stuff for us to think about. Uh, yeah, so great. And yeah, I'm and- thinking that has made me know more than ever we're gonna need mc grammar because now we're gonna have so many sections to these podcasts we need him to spit some bars for us and do the lyrics and he wears light up trainers so we need him in our lives so kind of the listeners know where we're going and what's coming next yeah i don't think i need any more trainer shame but uh yeah (laughs) definitely welcome to drop some beats (laughs) and and give us some those emails coming yeah, keep those emails coming, yeah. everybody. And definitely people uh, reviewing on the podcast platform that you are listening to. That really, really gives us a boost, but it helps us, you know, reach out to to more teachers and share the love. Yeah, I'm, I'm just giggling, you know, when you said boost. Oh, you know, when Kit like, was been teaching today, this kid, he couldn't shut up about boosting. So that's just really made me chuckle like i've been listening to boosting all day and you're boosting come on boost right boost me up with um with all your you know what are you grateful for because i'll tell you what i am a bit moody about how cold it's got so oh okay so you need well not boosting although i do love a boost chocolate bar they are pretty good what about something bursting through the ground can i go with that is that a, a good yeah, enough link love that. i yeah. am feeling grateful for even though it has got a little bit colder there's just there's lots of evidence of spring bursting forth lots of daffodils now when my little one She's not little anymore, you know, she's she's nearly 12. But when she was ickle, she used to say, look, and she'd say, daffodils, with a lovely melodic kind of sound. So looking at daffodils when I'm driving makes me have a little smile at daffodils. Uh, oh. But it all made, made me think, like, in spring term, even though, like, it's like the depths of winter and we call it spring term, what's that about teaching? It actually is a great term for seeing some of the the fruits of progress, you know, start, especially if you're in a year group like year one, 
you know, and they come to you and, you know, we're, we're at word level. And then suddenly in this term, you're really seeing things come together. And it's, you know, we should be grateful for that. Sometimes we've got our head down and we're slogging really hard and we're not seeing the steps forward. Um, yeah, be grateful for the little things and the daffodils. Oh, oh, do you know what? It's really interesting, isn't it, about year one? You're absolutely right there when kind of just, you know, it's that coming together, orchestrating all at once, and then suddenly they've just got so much uh, to offer. And I think in year one, because we're working so hard with those kind of life experiences, you know, that uh, we start seeing the kind of the fruits of our labour because we've lived things together with the kids, you know especially the yeah. summer born ones, you know, getting less uh, life experience, but they get that, that boost as it were from us. So yeah, you're right. We start seeing. The, uh, I feel trade-off. like we might need a bit of a, a word bingo for this episode. How many times <laughs> if, if, if you're not driving, uh, if you're ironing, uh, maybe you could, you could have some shots, you know, every time that Jane says boost <laughs> or whoosh um, or uses a word off the PG list, you could have a shot of your favourite favourite drink. I'll just have a mouthful of yeah. tea. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, if you if you're collecting off the PG list, why don't you have a bit of twat face? There you go. Um, anyway, <laughs> surely that's a double that's a double shot that one to start you all off. What are you grateful for, Jane? Have I lifted your mood uh, yet? Uh, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, I am, I'm grateful for compound words, as you know, nutsack and all of that. But no, my real <laughs> <laughs> my real uh, thing I'm grateful for it, and what makes my heart sing and my well-being sing, oh, my goodness. Okay, this is a bit of the gift of the uh, big form entry school, you know, like their four form entry. And I was in a school like that. And um, and because of that, I mean, don't we're not going to get too political and we're not going to get too angry with the government uh, about children being left uh, behind because of poverty reasons. But sort your lives out. It's utterly disgusting that we're not supporting school dinners for all children. But there are some schools and I think it is a numbers game, who do have absolutely wonderful kitchens and just what I was grateful for. You know, I paid my my, my way, but, um, and you know, like it's 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 the bulk, the bulk buy, you know, you get more tins of tomatoes and all of that jazz. <laughs> but, um, but, um, oh, it was so nostalgic because, um, you know, I'm doing a bit of throwback here, you know, some real old school stuff to 1979. Uh, you do the maths and I'm seven years old. And um, I think I've told you this before, but I'm so proud of this. I got a certificate for consistently going up for thirds. Uh, but I had a right old school pudding today and um, it was Pink jam custard. roly-poly. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Jam roll. Jam it's like normal roly custard. Poly. It's a, it's a <laughs> solid pudding that isn't it? I mean, sometimes it can be solid, but no, it really is a good pudding that isn't it? We went out for a meal oh, a, a little while ago, yeah, and um, we've got a great place down here called the Rum and Crab Shack in St Ives on the Harbour. It may or may not be owned by a member of my family, but they had on the menu jam roly poly. So we went to another restaurant and then just went to just went to the shack for pudding just just for the jam roly-poly and custard it's like a cuddle isn't it oh it's perfect you know all spotty dick you know any any will do you know it's a big heavy dose of sugar and carbs so that was gorge and nice. cheered me up because the heating on my car is not working and i cannot uh. moan <gasps> about it enough i mean it's the temperature's dropped and i I've got, I think I've got, um, I, I obviously I'll just self-diagnose all my little things, but you know, um, when your fingers go white at the end, I mean, you know, we, what is that? You know, when it's get really cold and they go a bit waxy, it's got a name anyway. Uh, so yeah, I'm driving with gloves, like cursing, oh. but the custard saved me. So thank goodness for that. Yeah. I am loving that. I think you might be right about the kind of the, 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 the larger schools there's a school that i'm going to on world book day to do uh, a book fair um and they're four form entry and last time i went and did a book fair there they presented me with this beautiful lunch as well so maybe it's a thing are you a four form entry school do you have five star dinners 
That's yeah, I th- well, well, I think it is, and I think that's why um, you know I want to do a big shout out for the small schools because there is um, you know that the bulk stuff you don't get to unlock that so much, and um, you know in the small schools you've got to kind of label up your coffee and put it behind you know <laughs> your locker with your name on it. You know, and what a mean? huge just, padlock. There's no, it's nice. there's no <laughs> wriggle room. You know, oh, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough. Oh, I'm glad I've eaten before we've done this podcast. Quite often, we record this on, on a Monday evening, and quite often I have my, I call it tea, Northerner, proud. I call it my tea, and uh, I usually have it after the podcast. But tonight, being yeah. a bit more organised and, and I've eaten, it's a good job, otherwise I'd be craving custard. Yeah. I know. I'm. I'm actually. I'm actually. Can you shut up, please? Because I'm actually quite hungry. I've. I've just kind of raced in and just. And uh, I, when I when I'm hungry, I do go a bit manic. So it's just like <laughs> what? Well, this could be a very interesting podcast. And uh, this, uh, can I tell you about our guest? I know you know yes. about our guest, but I'm just going to tell the listeners because we're doing something a bit different. Um, this is the first guest who has sent us a present and we're going to open this present in her company so our guest today is rachel from the positive teacher company i'm sure many of you have heard about the positive teacher company uh they are stationary mad and i'm gonna i've got my box and it says on it yay your box of goodies from the positive teacher company is here a happy place for teachers which i just think is is gorgeous and all of their followers on social media seem to be buoyed up and and happy by the support from this gorgeous company so shall we invite her in to have a chat and so we can open our box of goodies jane yeah let's do it come on rach tell us all about what's happening on the positive side of the street Well, Rachel, I don't know if you know this, but I am absolutely obsessed with stationery and I watch the annual top five Byros of the Year awards and make it my business to go out and buy the latest number one this year, of course, the Jetstream. I I really do like a no smudge flow vibe. Um, I could talk to to you for hours about stationery but what is your (laughs) top draw best stationery product oh it's got to be my washi tape (laughs) i didn't even know what washi tape was until i started the the positive teacher company um and now yeah my, my drawers my drawers are full of washi tape in all different patterns from all different businesses just millions of rolls of washi tape and what do you do with all this washi tape? You know, that's the thing. Most people don't actually know what to do with it. <laughs> and I didn't. So I just start, I just collected it and collected it. And it was just pretty. It just looked pretty for a long time. And then I actually started to watch things that people were doing with it. Um, and now I, my favourite thing to do with it is to wrap presents. So I'll always wrap things like a birthday present or a Christmas present in like craft, plain craft brown paper. But decorate it and fasten it with washi tape just it looks so pretty. Oh, you've won Jane over already. She <laughs> likes things done and nice and sorted. I'm a bit of, here you go. <laughs> oh, oh, I like that. I'm very much, here you go. <laughs> but washi tape, it, yeah, it's just because it, my jaws are full of it. I can just like whip it out. I don't have to think about buying some fancy paper. I just got my brown craft paper, my drawer of washi tape, and I can, I can just go. And so it's just lovely. <laughs> right, stop. I do not know what you're going on about. Honestly, what what is what I don't know what I'm visualizing. What is it? I can't believe right. you don't. You call yourself right. a stationary geek and you don't know what washi tape is. No, I to... oh, genuinely converter, Rachel converter. Yeah. I've got I've got two daughters who love washi tape as much as I do, which means I've opened my drawers, which were once full of washi tape. There isn't any washi tape in here anymore because they pinch every single roll. But I have got, I found uh, this um, badge that I got from Nutmeg and Arlo, who's a stationery business, and it says washi, washi lover on it. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, I still don't know what it is. 
what the hell is it? It's like fancy paper tape, isn't it? But like, yeah, yeah. like sellotape tape. with a pat with a pattern on it. Yeah, but it's like paper texture. I've got a stash. <laughs> She's right, on it. So She's on it, Kate. This I is turning into a, a, a washi tape lesson. <laughs> Learning objective to understand what washi tape yeah, yeah. is. Sell a tape with a pattern on it. Yeah, it's paper transparent. Tape, it's really easy to use. Yeah. You don't need to find scissors. You just like rip it off. Can I just say, Rach, most people ain't watching this, so stop flashing me stuff <laughs> and just <laughs> use words, babe. Use words. Like, I like what you're flashing me, but like, no one's watching this. It's a podcast. People in the country. Now you said she's flashing. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> she... <laughs> what? Uh, well, yeah, now, now you've not, said. It's not transparent. It, it's like solid. It's a solid colour, but it's got patterns. It's We've got it to match all our planner designs. And yeah, I just have rolls and rolls and rolls of these, all the different patterns, all different colours to go with ev anything and everything, basically. <laughs> Amazing. But well, Jane, now you've said that, you know, most people listen to the podcast, we're going to do something yes. quite visual and open our amazing boxes. So you just make sure that you're doing a good job of narrating as well. Both Who of me? us, Rachel. Yeah, yeah. You both, both of us, Rachel. <laughs> Both yeah. of us have, have, have done the rippy bit so that we didn't look daft doing it live. <laughs> and both of us did have problems. <laughs> oh, that's good feedback anyway. <laughs> no, it's not your feedback. I think I did it from the wrong end. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, you've both right, got I the think, I think this is um, conceptually crap, actually. Like, unboxing, <laughs> like, <laughs> is done visually this is yes. like whose idea was this did we have a team meeting about it i'm not a youtuber what the hell okay guys i've got a really thick it. cardboard it feels nice in my fingers <laughs> i'm folding it back <laughs> like and subscribe no one's watching what's hey, going Jane. on here boys what <laughs> <laughs> when you open it, it it's got some tips for getting your stationary unboxing just right it says you've got to find a quiet space well, we haven't got one of them away from <laughs> yeah. little fingers and grubby paws. That's OK. There's no Luna with us today. Unwrap your stationary treasures and spend as much time as you need ogling over their loveliness. How nice is that? And then step three, find a well-lit spot. Well, I've got my ring thing on and snap a picture yep. of them in all their pristine glory and share with all the other stationary lovers in your life you'll appreciate this box of stationary heaven well we're kind of doing that aren't we i'm going to make loads of noise now all these rips and things are going to stress Ian out aren't they <laughs> <laughs> oh have, have you have you got the same design as me if you've got gorgeous sunflowers Oh, I haven't got that, first of all. I've got... I'm opening, I'm opening a bag and it's a big bag of washi tape, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's like washi tape heaven. <gasps> Look at I've, all I've of just these. nearly knocked over a cup of coffee. Oh, life. I'm, I'm, not, very, I'm not very good at this. I'll coordinate <laughs> myself. This could be our most chaotic podcast. How do teachers <laughs> use this washi tape, Rachel? How do teachers Most use it to help them be a bit happier or more organised? Most teachers and um, well, our customers use it to decorate their planner. So our planner spreads um, are quite plain and generic and lots of people like to match them to the cover of their planner or theme them to the time of year or just like a nice theme. So they use the washi tape to like decorate areas of the, I like to go over a line on the planner or to show when their break time is or something like that. And um, I've seen some absolutely gorgeous spreads of the wash. Some people are really, really, I'm not as creative, creative as our customers and um, some really like lovely, beautiful spreads of washi tape. Yeah, and there's, I've and, spotted a group on Facebook. Sorry, Jane. I spotted a group on Facebook enough. with people sharing their ideas and actually they're sharing the beautiful ideas, but they're talking about how it kind of de-stresses them and calms them down. Yeah, that's it. We've got our TPTC Inspiration Group on Facebook and 
yeah. we do have some people say, well, I would never have time to do this. Like, well, I'd be aware if you've got the time, but actually that it is my de-stressing time. It's my like self-care time to get my washi tape out, my nice pens, I have them all out nice on my desk. And it, and especially when I was a teacher, just like an organization time and it was my self-care time. So it's not, it's about making time for yourself rather than making time for planning. It's just yeah. something a bit self-care. And I, th I think that's um, the point, isn't it? Like we know so much more now about um, organisational tools and journaling and yeah. um, kind of getting your head around the chaos. And not, you know, if you think about um, the world of teaching, not only do we have the chaotic world, but we have another layer again of uh, the chaos that is a school. Um, and just having a sense of being able to um, put some order together is absolutely about self-care. And, and when you look over your shoulder in a staff meeting, uh, and a lot of my work is, you know, uh, as you know, you know, around kind of CPD, some of the notes and mind map and journaling and organization that's happening is absolutely top draw. And I think that sort of crystal clear approach to um, thinking about your job, thinking about work, uh, the, the order lens of getting through this kind of workload and stuff, um, you know, I do see a pattern. I do see a pattern of that sort of investment in the organisation. And, and so on one level, it seems really kind of superficial. You know, it's just a gel pen or a journal or tit tape, whatever the frick that's called. Tit, I don't know. What's not called tit tape? What is it called? Washi tape. Washi tape. Washi. Tape. <laughs> you, can, anyway, you, can that. Use it. you can use it to keep them in place if you want, Jane. They've been a nice enough patterns. But I'll don't tell you put what, they get the, a bit... Uh, inspiration facebook yeah. group you need, i tell you what you i might... breast four kids they're a bit erect so that's what i'm using my washi tape for do you know what i mean i just look like what, I'm else, excited to box, see Jane? <laughs> what else is in your box i'll tell you what i've got loads in my box i've got a journal i've got um organization stuff i've got post-its akimbo i've got night day oh. time planet post-its oh. um and um, I'll tell you, do you do these post-its where they're clear and um, you can still see stuff behind them and you can write over them? I will put you on the spot, Rachel. Do you do them? Yeah. I, don't do, I don't do the square ones. We've got um, ones that are on like a page marker for your planners. They're like index tabs, but they're like, a, like transparent so you can write over the top of them. But you can get, I think you can I love get those. transparent post-its now. Really got one of these, Thank you for that hey? word. Transparent, got... yeah. Hey, I love these. Uh, do you know who hates these? Ian. Who? Uh, he cannot, like, he hate. right. It's like it's the a, more lists It's a my week big massive post-it pad with a, uh, yeah. a section for every day of the week to organise your life. These are great. Yeah. Yeah. Monday, yeah. have sex or your husband will leave you. Cheers. <laughs> Tuesday, work on your marriage. Wednesday, don't bring your marking home. Or, or put it in your boot, drive it back to work the next day, never took it out of the booth. <laughs> All of that. All of that. Yeah. No, oh, Jane. Be nice to children. Yeah, you I'm need to write this stuff down. I'm not what? sure about um, unboxing, Jane, is a little bit erratic. <laughs> As the station is chaos. Got to you. Let's talk to Rachel then. Let's just... Yeah. <laughs> you just calm down. Bring yourself back down off your stationary high. You can rub yeah. your washi tape wherever you like later on. <laughs> so <laughs> the, <laughs> the your company is called the Positive Teacher Company. You were a teacher. I know lots of your team are uh, ex-teachers as well. You know what a tough job it is um, yeah. and how hard it can get how how does your business how do your products help teachers to bring some balance to work and life and, and breathe some positivity into into their teaching um well our tagline is a happy place for teachers and i'm i'm just so proud that over the last seven years it really has become a happy place for teachers and i haven't done it on purpose i haven't thought right this is what 
this is what my aim is i'm gonna this is the business aim i'm gonna move to this it's just naturally happened over seven years and part of it is just people being along the journey with me as a because i was a teacher when i started the business I, I was a teacher for three years into three years into the business before i left um and just people following that journey with me and just the like how difficult being a teacher is anyway um and then share like just sharing that experience of teaching and the happiness that stationery can bring that's just like it's just so crazy that stationery can bring such happiness and it's because there's there's kind of a disconnect between stationery and we're not we're a teacher we're an education business and a teacher business but we don't bang on about the school side of stuff it's kind of an escape from the teaching side while also being something that's helpful to teachers um, and that's what was important to me because I started it as an escape from my stresses of a job. I love the creative side of teaching. I love creating stuff. And I liked te I liked teaching. It was just really stressful. So it was my kind of escape as creating this lovely stationery, this lovely this stuff that was going to help me in my job and be less stressed. Um, and I created my happy place, which was my little business, and it's just expanded. And I've kind of gathered all these other teachers into my own happy place. It's become everybody's happy place. And I'm super proud that that's where it is now, seven years on. Absolutely, you should be. Rachel, <laughs> do you think there's two types of teachers, those that love stationery and uh, being arty farty and collecting and organising in that form of kind of, uh, kind of escapism? Uh, but also understanding their job and then there's some people that it it's not for them do you think or do you think there's you know more than that or do you think there's a chance yeah. for everybody to unlock the magical world of stationery yeah i think it's i think we always say if you if you don't love stationery are you really a teacher <laughs> like it's one of those things that, <laughs> that i like all teachers love and, and henry who is my business partner he is, and you won't mind me saying this, the most disorganised teacher in the world. And I worked with him, he was my, my NQT mentor, and now we're business partners. And he was one of those guys who would write a lesson plan on a post-it note, like it would just be like scribbled, incredibly disorganised. But he lo loves stationery. You wouldn't know it because he's so disorganised, but he loves stationery and it's kind of his, even if it is scribbled on a notebook or something, it doesn't have to look pretty. Um, but stationery is kind of his only form of organisation. If he didn't have the post-it note or the scrappy little notebook, I don't really know how we would cope. Um, so I don't think you <laughs> yeah, have yeah. to be creative. Um, I think I'm in can... that camp. Yeah. <laughs> and do, you think, of... do you think it? Do you think there's a time where it will go all electronic and we, and we won't need it? You know. No. I don't do you think. think... Ever will. No. no. Lena. And, and uh, you might ask, I worked in schools where everything was electronic, lesson plans were electronic, but I would still handwrite my, my like, like write it on a planner first before I typed anything on a computer. It just helped get it from my brain into an organized space. And then the computer was like, as if I was writing it like in neat sort of thing. Um, well, there's research about that, isn't there? There's deeper levels of connection, retention and thinking uh, if we actually write things down, you know. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we know we know that we know that that's why children, when they're trying to revise and if you've got any kids that are trying to revise, if they just read the material uh, or just highlight, we know it's not going to make a difference. But if they have to glean from that information and actually the physical form of handwriting it, uh, organizing it into mind maps, categorizing it, this is that next level of connection. And I do think, um, as you say, thinking about our jobs um, helps us enjoy them more, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, that, that investment <laughs> in it. I think the stationery yeah. as well, we talk a lot about being role models as readers on this podcast, but actually role models as writers and having a different formats of writing and choosing the, the, the things that we do it with and showing that we care is, is a great model for our pupils as well and shows our writer identity, which we talked about before. Rachel, if you had one item that you guys have just with that teachers need to know about what would that one item be and then tell us don't where say the tape 
<laughs> don't say washi tape and then tell us tell us where teachers can find you because i think some of them who haven't heard of you before will be seeking you out now so a planner would definitely that's how we're that's the first product we ever um created and it's the the product we live and die by and now we have a range of different planners to suit a number of different roles so whether you are teaching in the classroom or whether you're a head teacher whether you're a TA whether you're not even in education at all you are just you're a parent who likes to work in academic years rather than um from January to December and um, our, our planners are absolute the go-to there's something to suit everybody and where can we find them you can find them at tptc.co.uk we did originally have just the positive teacher company.co.uk but it was just even i was getting fed up of typing all that tptc.co.uk <laughs> and we like a bit of that in education don't we nqt slt or you know we like a bit of shortening don't we uh it, rachel it's been really lovely thank you for putting up with our chaotic unboxing and <laughs> converting Jane to a washy a washy tape queen um <laughs> Look out for her while she take pictures on. Is it just fans? Is that the right place? <laughs> Only fans. Keep Only up, fans. Babe. Oh, they told you they're super fashionable. But thank you. It's been absolutely no wonderful to have you on. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Yeah, thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Bye. Heather, I'm going to take you back in time to 1982. You've got a colouring book. There's nothing in this colouring book. You're dipping uh, your paintbrush into some water. You paint it, and then, wow, this thing's revealed. Like, I think good stationery does that, you know. I mean, yeah. are you loving stationery? I know you are loving I'm lo stationery. I'm loving that you just said that I was painting in 1982 because I was born in 1982, <laughs> Jane. <laughs> But I know, Stop I know showing those, off. <laughs> I know those um, those colouring painting books that you're talking about. But yeah, I I love a bit of stationery. I love a great pen. I love a great post it. I love to handwrite stuff. We've talked about that, and uh, that's why it's great that Reading Rocks has done a collaboration with the Positive Teacher Company. So not the box that we were sent. Those are very personalised, special boxes for us. How exciting of all the products that they sell. But we have done a box in collaboration with them. Um, they they have a subscription, a bi monthly subscription, just like us. Theirs is stationery, and our bi monthly subscription is books. And they're going to collaborate on our next box as well. So if you haven't managed to get one of the sold out Positive Teacher Company with Reading Rocks sub box, then come and get one of the Reading Rocks with the Positive Teacher Company boxes at whereReadingRocks.com. Because, mm. oh my goodness, Jane, the March boxes yes. are so exciting. I can't tell Heather, you anything about the books, but yeah. I can tell you. I mean, you. I'm a bit, don't tell me, I'm actually really moody. I'm really no, fed I'm up. I'm going to tell I you. Just feel, I'm not talking no, to you then. I feel, I think you've got in bed with somebody else and I just can't <laughs> quite get over this. I'll send you a badge. I'm not happy. I'll send you a badge. It's just a box. It's Sod not a podcast. Your badge. It's just a podcast. Oh. Uh, it's just a, oh, I'm all befuddled now. See, you've got me flapping. You've got me flapping. <laughs> Jane, See? I only have eyes yeah. for you. Let me tell you about the March subscription box, as well Go as our then. normal two glorious books. And there are some gorgeous, gorgeous choices. It's just a bumper one because March is the month of World Book Day. So we've got World Book Day books going in there. We've got goodies from the Positive Teacher Company. We've got some bookish magazines going in as well. It's just going to be bursting at the seams. So if you've been thinking about signing up and you haven't, now is the time. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And on that theme of reading, uh, I know it's short notice, but, you know, on in terms of like excitement and getting ready to really sharpen up your reading curriculum, if you send me an email at Jane, Jane, what's my name? It's not Jade, is it? I don't know what I'm saying. Jane at the teacher squad podcast dot com. And you just write me this email that says I love reading. Then Ooh. if you're the first person to do that, I will save you a seat on Friday, <gasps> the 10th of March. 
at my reading teacher training center where we're going to be talking about book talk uh developing wow. a reader's mindset and explaining the reading unit plan so you can take them straight back to the classroom and i mean that honestly in fact that seat i'll be saving to be right next to me so yeah you can be my friend for the day so <laughs> if don't you be, want don't that, be by that. <laughs> <laughs> share my, my tape and everything so uh, oh that's very generous jane so I've just got to email you and say i want to be your friend I, I love reading. No, I yeah. Reading. I want to be okay. reading. I love you. Come with me. Sight in. Bosh. Exciting. Get those emails <laughs> coming in to Jane. She likes those kind of emails. <laughs> yeah, short, sweet, to the point. I oh, love it. So, um, um, wonder of words. Uh, have there, has there been words that have... I thought we'd do a sentence, to your brain. What? I thought oh, we'd do... Yeah. We missed a bit out. <laughs> Oh, it's all this remodeling, babe. I can't keep up what we're on. Go on then. Just Tell me what you've got to sum up. Well, I'm going to do an experiment oh. first. I just want you to just look, look at the camera and just relax. Okay, just, just, just relax for this experiment. That's it. You look absolutely beautiful. Oh, and it makes you smile. Have you seen that thing that pops up on social media and it's like a photographer's taken photographs of people and it's like just a normal face and then it captures the moment when they're told that they are beautiful and then it just kind of shines out of their face what i want to talk about jane is praise two reasons i want to talk about praise and a half reason because i want to sing i just want to praise you i get that out of my head <laughs> but i want to talk about <laughs> building intrinsic motivation reason number one this may or may not be true and people can let me know but i have heard on the grapevine that a certain phonics scheme now says there's no room for a wash there's no room for praise we haven't got time for that we just got to get on with the phonics um and then also uh chatting to somebody about a pupil that's moved schools just for a normal geographic reason and at one school they had that there was there was plenty of praise and they knew where they stood and they knew what they were doing right and then at the next school that wasn't really there there's just kind of this well that's what's expected this just do it kind of thing and it made me think about <laughs> maybe we, maybe sometimes this pendulum has swung a bit where we understand that it's the intrinsic motivation and the building of that which is important we know intrinsically motivated whether it's for reading writing learning that pupils are going to do better at that they're going to engage in it the more they do the better they get the Matthew effect etc etc and get a little bit mixed up in the fact that praise is thinking it's extrinsic if we give children stickers too much or there's prizes then that is going to be extrinsic but we need to make sure that we're talking giving praise so that chill is the that we talk about evidence informed again so that they know when it is the right thing we you know we need to tell them that my word of the year that i said is noticing and i kind of notice that quite often when you are chatting to your own children there's a bit of oh just be quiet just pick that up have you done this da, 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 da. shush no and quite often our pattern we're kind of noticing the things um that are maybe a bit negative but with the dog a cut you know she wheezes in the right place and you say good girl <laughs> and maybe when our yeah. pupils are a little you know we did praise her when she did a we in the right place but but not anymore so it's thinking about what we praise and differentiating that for each pupil so not to add to anyone's workload i mean i do not want to do that it's a thinking thing really but it's about planning for praise and making sure that pupils are understanding they've got this kind of concept this wireframe like we do in writing a waggle 
this is what a good piece of writing looks like this is what good resilience looks like this is what effort looks like and feels like i don't know if you follow uh, the good morning club and jen foster on instagram brilliant account if you don't and and she's an expert on on behavior and makes educators look at it in a slightly different way and one of the things that she shares are scripts and these are for behavior scenarios but i was thinking about praise scripts and having them in your patter we've all been in the staff room when people say oh my class just keep giving up or my class are negative about this and there's a you know we we need a place to have a bit of a moan like that don't we but we we kind of we can do those observations about what our class aren't doing or aren't achieving so maybe we need to tailor our praise scripts for that so that we begin to notice when they are doing the right thing and say I love the way you kept going there. Did it feel good when you reached, insert said milestone? Do you know what I mean? And coming up with those phrases that you think, I'm gonna try and use that today to address this issue um, in kind of attitude and, and, and learning behavior. That's what I've been thinking about, Jane. Don't know how useful it is to people. I... Uh, no, it is really useful. And I tell you what, I could not agree more. I honestly could not agree more. There is such a children feel so uh, fragile, uncertain. It can get a little bit gnarly and rushy in schools. And, yeah. and we really do need to think about um, them. It, we've got a catch them doing things that are really yeah. in the department of i have noticed that you're really thinking hard about that and you know and that language at the tip of your tongue thank you for powering up uh, to a paragraph um uh i think this is excellent how you've uh, read like a teacher your voice was uh really audible and clear for everybody for learning like it it, we don't have to over -egg it. It has to be laced into everything we do. Um, and we know that children who are enjoying school, I mean, I honestly, I, I, if Ofsted went round and checked how many children are enjoying the process of learning and how many teachers are enjoying their working life, like, yes, we've got um, things to teach, but I don't know. I, I I really do agree with you, Heather. That um, it's it's not it's it, it's not um, superficial. It's it's critical. You know, if kids if we if they're enjoying it and and they can see in a very concrete way uh, the stuff they are doing and they under deeply understand it, then you know the, the world is our oyster in what we can unlock for. Learning. And yeah, I just think. We're supposed to be enjoying it. They're supposed to be enjoying it. Children enjoy writing, particularly, are seven times more likely, the National Literacy Trust tells us this, to be great at depth writers. I mean, yes, yes, yeah. and yes, bold and underlined, Heather. And, you know, I, I've, I've got that <laughs> fold in my brain because I want to talk about that probably again uh, on the back Fantastic. of what you're saying. Oh, I'm glad you're right, you though. Know. It's funny, isn't it, how yeah. little triggers and things come together. But it, interesting to hear from listeners as well if you've done yes. little pockets of research in your classroom about specific praise or you've read any great research you know fire things back at us we are we are here we're constant learners aren't we jane um yeah yeah we're happy but I to leave, share I what we look... know but really yeah. you know we'd love to learn from people as well yeah I, and i just think that look positive pockets of positivity you know is it happening have we got it um yeah on the on the back of that i mean i'd, I'd hate to bring you down but you know i'm a bit more moodier and grumpier <laughs> than you are uh, i just i just um i just want to share this isn't very positive actually but uh, uh but i do know it's uh one of your books that you and it's one of the books on the empathy lab it's an x <gasps> i mean that's an x it's a uh, uh, jeffrey's got the jitters um 
I just want to... Nadia, just, Shireen, gorgeous. In the back of this book, and it has made me reflect today, um, because I weren't half grumpy today and I was worrying about stuff. There are six types of worry. Uh, they've got visuals and I'm just going to go through them. And if you're worrying at the moment, you know, I want you to consider, are you number one, two, three, four, five or six? Number one, the brood. Something happened a long time ago, but the brood is still thinking about it. You know who you are. Get over it, get your head around it, file it, move on. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> number two, the niggle. Every now and then the niggle will poke you with a tiny stick and remind you about something annoying. Mm. How they slurp their tea or chew their extra gum. They've got four capsules in there chewing, chomping while driving. Oh. Yeah. Who is that? That's me. <laughs> it's not me. I'm a bit of I've got oral aggression. Another story. Right. Number three, are you the spiral? When one worry links to another worry and then another worry and then you're spinning. Oh, wow. oh the frazzle. Yeah. Look, Bacon flavor. frazzle is very busy. <laughs> Frazzle, <laughs> I can't stop. The stress, are you stressed? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, no, I'm fine. Not it's very fine. teachery. Very teachery, yes. that one. Um, I'm laughing about this one because I know somebody, and I just want to stop here. This worry is called the fret. Uh, and I know somebody for probably about six years called like fretting about something, called it threat as in th and that i'm threatening about something and i've got a lot of respect for this person but there just came a time and i was like hun sit down it's only very nuanced but you're mispronouncing fret <laughs> as threat and as much as i have respect for you this is really embarrassing and it's got to stop that's a whole it's conversation isn't it it's over so the fret uh, doesn't want to talk about it and is going to hide under a blanket and just fret endlessly. Uh, or the panic has lost control, is going to run around screaming, maybe wearing pants on your head or some tape on your tits. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Great book. Love that book. Great share, Jane. I know it's one of yours, and it's in the from the Empathy Lab, who we interviewed yeah. uh, recently. It's all there. Love it, love it, love it. Honey, what yeah. have you got? I love Nadia Shireen. Well, I've gone for a novel this time, and this is one that's just featured in January's subscription box. Uh, the Boy yep. Who Fell From The Sky, uh, Benjamin Dean. Now, we, we previously featured one of his books a few years ago, um, and me my dad and the end of the rainbow and beautiful kind of writing about that relationship between a son and a dad which i think you know we need more of those uh shown in literature and this this book the boy who fell from the sky has uh, a boy zeb and this this relationship with the dad and this you just feel this scenario. So Zeb's dad is a demon hunter. These demons fall from the sky and, and he is supposed to be the chief catcher of them. And Zeb's kind of messed it up. Mm. Uh -oh. All I'd wanted to do was prove that I could be a hunter and be just like dad. Even if I hadn't seen the constellation of Eras in my assessment, instead, I'd only made a mess. And to make matters even worse, Arrow had officially joined Lith's pack, almost as if she was purposefully trying to rub it in my face. Yep, things were looking bleaker than ever. We can still catch the demons, Scythe said. It was a mistake, that's all. Mistakes cost reputation, Dad snapped. They cost legacy. We'll be a laughing stock if we don't sort this mess out. He stood up abruptly, making me jump. I want everyone back out there. We can't let Lith get the edge on us. If she knows we've failed, she'll do anything in her power to make sure she succeeds. I won't see that happen. 
the pack murmured, yes, sir, in unison, strapping their bows and arrows over their shoulders. And remember, there are shooters all over the city catching every last second of this hunt on camera. We'll be on every TV screen in the city by now. We can't afford to fail again. I'll join you out there shortly. You're not coming with us now? Rex asked. Dad shook his head. I have matters to deal with here first. I'm not scared mm. to admit that I felt my stomach drop and almost leave my body here in Dad's word. I have been waiting to learn what my fate was since I'd been caught. <gasps> I'm going to just leave it there. Mm. But I just love the kind of the conversations and the relationship between father and son. It's a it's a cracking read and it's got lovely themes about kind of accepting people who are different. Um, yeah, so that's my wonder of words. That might be a bit Hopefully. scared. That might be it might be take me back to my childhood. I've got matters to deal with here for Oh, it's a bit scary. James you can feel that here. kind of oh I've done yeah. it wrong. What's dad gonna uh -oh. say? What, you know, what are they gonna do? I think yeah. children will reading yeah. that will really relate uh to, to those working those relationships out. But yeah, yeah fantastic well it's been fun jane mm. we've never done an unboxing before not sure we'll do it not again doing it we again. went slightly <laughs> chaotic <laughs> but you've got lots of fun ahead of you with your washi tape um yes yes thank you we say goodbye wow <laughs> Yeah, I am going to say goodbye. Uh, I'm going to say it's a big love from Heather and Heartbursts from Jane. See you next week. We got it right. See you next week, everyone. Yeah. yeah.